Whether we're talking about softly lit alleys or awe-inspiring sunbathed forests, there's no denying that lighting is one of the most important cinematic elements that can make or break a video game's immersion. Although a natural, unaltered sunset scene does a fantastic job at pulling at our heartstrings, the modern luxuries of multi-light setups and the more recent real-time rendering engines used to create some of our favorite video games have allowed us to discover new ways of using light for impressive storytelling. In this video, we're going to explore how the games we love have pushed the boundaries of creativity and how they use light to create immersive worlds, draw emotion from us, and even create unique game mechanics that might surprise you. Also, if you want to learn how to create beautiful environments in Unreal Engine, check out my brand new environment art course called the Environment Artist Survival Kit, where you're going to learn everything from making flowing grass to fluffy trees and sweeping beautiful landscapes. I'll leave a link in the description for anyone who's interested in checking out the course. Before we get too deep into this video, I think it's important for you to understand some basic concepts about light when trying to discuss such an abstract ethereal concept. From my research, light can be judged by four distinct traits quality, quantity, direction, and color. The quality of light is its ability to cast either hard or soft shadows. A bright, focused light will create well-defined and sharp shadows and provide a high contrast look to a scene. These types of lights work best for infusing a strong sense of drama to the scenes and making them appear edgy and raw. Games make great use of these for scenes with a lot of action or pressing suspense, as is the case of the harsh shadows cast by a scorching sun in the game Just Cause 2. Alternatively, soft lighting is more diffuse and casts little to no shadows at all. As a result, it's a lot more natural looking and can make subjects and environments appear welcoming and warm. Another important aspect is the quantity and intensity of light. Bright, high key, and uniform lighting can induce a feeling of spaciousness and relaxation. The bright, open vastness of No Man's Sky is a perfect example of this. At the same time, a low light level with dark areas around it will feel a lot more private, claustrophobic, and depending on the specific of the game, tends to downright terrifying. The dimly lit corridors of Dead Space are a great example of a game that relies on a lack of lighting to create tension, fear, and claustrophobia. Direction is yet another factor that can influence the atmosphere of a particular scene with intense light from above creating tension, while light at the room perimeter induces a feeling of safety. The direction of light itself is often used to guide the player towards points of interest and showcase assets with the greatest level of detail. Lastly, a critical aspect of lighting is its color, and this should come as no surprise to anyone. Color has been used intensively to convey emotion in all art mediums, and is vital for setting specific moods and suggesting emotional states. Games make no exception to this, as we probably already know how warm light can feel relaxing, while cool light usually makes us feel more alert and ready for the next battle. And when we detach from the limiting constraints of the real world, lighting can assume basically any color, which makes it an invaluable tool for portraying and inducing very specific ambiances. Okay, take Firewatch for example. This game is an exceptional example of how unsaturated yet somehow striking hues can influence how we feel about a certain situation, and how lighting perfectly blends the graphics and the story into a complete, heart-wrenching experience. But why exactly does lighting have such a powerful impact on our emotions? Let's take a look and explore the psychology of light for a second. You'll be pressed to take a psychology class and not hear the words stimulus and response. They are the foundation for our most basic understanding of how our minds work, and they define the relationship between ourselves and our environments. Most of our responses happen subconsciously, thus are perceived as involuntary. Think of you pulling your finger away from a hot pan or Pavlov's dog salivating at the sound of a bell. Similarly, most of us will be able to tell that red light increases alertness and blue light promotes a relaxed ambiance, but the stimuli will often go unnoticed, with their effects only being felt on an intuitive level. A lighting director, however, will need to be painfully aware of the way the placement, quality, and color of light impacts gameplay and use everything in their toolbox to craft scenes that are compelling, completely immersive, and suitable to the overall story. Their work is completely critical to a game, and when it's done well, it goes unnoticed, as it is threading every other element to build a believable environment. Poor lighting, on the other hand, will almost always catch our eye and dissipate the illusion, which is why a tremendous amount of care goes into lighting game scenes. 
The daily sun and moon cycles that we experience every single day have a deep impact on our psyche and massively contribute to the feeling of realism in digital worlds. They help separate moments of comfort and exploration from danger and tension. Take the game Darkwood, for example. Players are encouraged to explore and forage during the day, but swiftly return to their hideouts before the night sets, when banshees and other hungry creatures come out looking to make a meal out of them. A light that comes from unnatural angles is uncomfortable because it's unfamiliar and creates unusual and potentially disturbing shapes on the subject. The traditional above light is familiar because the sun is an omnipresent light source in our day-to-day -day lives. Alternatively, artificial lighting sources and colors can suggest man-made environments and even induce surreal, subjective impressions when they're exaggerated. Now that we have a better understanding of light itself, let's take a look at how these principles are applied in game design to manipulate emotion and craft an immersive environment. Now, going past a game aesthetics, the immersive nature of games requires artists to use light with more practical considerations in mind as well. While cinematic principles remain the same in games as with other art mediums, the nature of games requires lighting techniques to serve a bigger purpose than other forms of media, which expect a passive audience. And so lighting will be often used to indicate milestones or markers in the gameplay, guiding players toward a certain direction, even though they might not be consciously aware of what made them go that way in the first place. One example that springs to mind is Doom Eternal's Atlantica facility, which uses expertly placed lights to guide the player through maze-like corridors and showcase points of interest with the highest level of detail. Guiding the player around an unfamiliar place, or should we say a planet, by following light streams and pillars is also extensively used in the Halo series, which beautifully harmonizes warm glowing light in nature scenes and cool overhead lighting in the man-made sci-fi interiors. And the technique of using light to highlight points of interest becomes increasingly apparent in stealth games as well. Playing games like Alien Isolation, you'll soon begin to notice how dark and light areas benefit from a harsh contrast that helps you stay in the shadows and avoid light as to not be seen by your targets. However, considering the interactive nature of games, players will often have the possibility to manipulate light around them as they see fit. Lighting torches or using flashlights, shooting fire arrows or guns at a previously non-illuminated space, or even putting out fires and closing blinds are all autonomous decisions that a player can take to manipulate the state of affairs in a certain scene. These effects are all achieved with the use of dynamic lighting, which caters to real-time alterations of the game scene using instantaneous lighting calculations. This type of manipulation of light has only really been possible in recent games as recent developments in game engine technologies allow for real-time and nuanced variations in light rays, refractions, and shadows, which help create a truly immersive, realistic experience. In my opinion, the greatest forms of art are the ones that are able to draw emotion out of you. In order for a game to capture your heart, immerse you into an elaborate, stirring world, and keep you there long after you've walked away. Balling your eyes out while playing a video game isn't exactly an uncommon occurrence, with cult titles like The Last of Us and even Gris's players frequently reporting onion cuttings in their vicinity, and feeling inspired and happy while playing upbeat games with lovely resolutions like A Story About My Uncle is something we sometimes take for granted. Genova Chen, the award-winning game designer, says, Many people cried for a movie or novel. The first entertainment that made me cry was a game. He then went on to create games like Journey and Sky, Children of Light, which make excellent use of lighting and coloring techniques to induce a sense of wonder and optimism. Journey's glowing deserts and Sky's dreamlike worlds, underpinned by subtle dynamic lighting, are two outstanding examples of how the lighting, intensity, and color can touch parts of you that pre-rendered art never even got to see. Circling back to Ori and the Blind Forest, we get a little schooling on how mesmerizing lighting can transmute a game into a beautiful work of art that will handcuff you to your seat for hours. The soft yet powerful bloom effects perfectly paint the picture of the enchanted forest, as the bright, saturated yet mild colors bleed beautifully into one another to craft a story that doesn't need a narrator. Misty volumetrics and disarming god rays uncover the forest little by little and separate the backgrounds and foregrounds for a magic effect of depth that sometimes makes you forget that you're playing a 2D platformer. But let's leave the fairy tales and descend into complete crippling terror for a second. 
Many horror games make use of a technique called framing, in which the player's vision is completely limited and many parts of the field are sharply contrasted or hidden altogether to ensure maximum panic. In Outlast, for example, you can only see in the dark with the use of your handheld camera. The terror of having to hide from nightmarish creatures as you're making your way out of the asylum is given an extra oomph by the limited field of vision and off-putting green hues, and the flickering lights don't do a great job at assuring you that you're going to be okay. And it also certainly doesn't help that your night vision privileges can be quickly revoked if you don't manage to find batteries in time, which only serves to keep you in a constant state of dread. As if this game wasn't terrifying enough. When game studios take lighting out of its comfortable world-building role, they are left with opportunities for creating original titles that stand the test of time. Amnesia The Dark Descent is a cult classic among horror fans because of its creative use of light as a powerful game mechanic. Players need to control and manage the time they spend in either darkness or light, otherwise their sanity meters will be affected, which in turn will leave room for gruesome hallucinations and an overall bad time. One of my favorite games, Dying Light, has paved the way for more complex day and night cycles that are not only there to infuse a sense of familiarity to the environment, but actually change the gameplay drastically and keep players on their toes. During the day cycle, Dying Light zombies will wander mindlessly, which allows the player to easily parkour their way through the city, but as soon as night hits, they become a lot more aggressive. In turn, players will get double the experience points at night, which incentivizes them to go out at night and gives them more immersive decisions to take. And how could we forget about Alan Wake, with the inventive use of a flashlight which not only allows the player to see in darkness, but is an indispensable weapon in fighting the Taken. Shining your flashlight on a Taken for long enough will make them susceptible to bullets, making for a truly original combat mechanic. Additionally, we can take a look at another beautiful platformer that uses light as the principal mechanic behind the gameplay. In Closure, your character can only use the platforms on which light shines forcing you to follow moving spotlights or to use certain objects to shine light in that direction in which you want to go or create dark spots through which you can slither. Using the motion of lighting to dictate what the player should be feeling is not exactly a modern trick. From the beginning of video games, action-packed scenes were underpinned by strobing lights, exploding balls of energy flying everywhere, police lights flashing in close proximity, and fast blinking lights were added to ensure players feel a sense of urgency when they're playing their games. While sometimes these slight changes in environment will only be noticed on a subconscious level, they really help drive the general state of panic to the appropriate levels. One example that springs to mind, with full force I might add, is the Doom series. In addition to light being used beautifully to showcase both the cold man-made environments and the scorching nature, Doom 4 makes use of a behemoth collection of little blinking lights, blinding explosion and raging fires to always keep you on your toes and to have your heart racing. Slicing enemies up in Ghost Runner is also accompanied by flashy neon lights, aggressive sparks and flying light waves, which subconsciously tells the player to play fast, hard and aggressive. Softer scenes, in turn, will use slow moving lights and forgiving gradients to lower your pulse and give you a chance to catch up before the next ride. For example, scenes in which you travel through the beautiful Tsushima are speckled with diffuse volumetrics, warm blinding sunshine and soft colors to put the players at ease. In contrast, combat scenes see a lot more flying sparks, incandescent ashes, and roaring fires. There's no denying the impact lighting has on the games we play, and its subtleties are often lost on us as we absentmindedly trod through our quest lines and steamroll towards the next boss to get that much coveted gear upgrade. One of the best things you can do for your own immersion is to simply stop. Take a second and appreciate this beautiful and immersive and carefully crafted world these artists have sacrificed years of their lives to make. It's in these small details that you'll find an entirely new world of story, emotion, and love that will take your love and appreciation of these games to an entirely new level. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. As usual, if you want to support us on Stylized Station, be sure to check us out on Patreon. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.